Deck Masters, are we live? I believe we are. All right, we sorry did. about this. So, we did it. Deck Masters week, basically the playoffs week, the week, the week to rule them all. Now, unfortunately, neither uh, me nor Wombat has a uh, video available as a result of some Skype issues we're running into, but you don't need to see our faces more than the picture. How are you doing, man? I am doing a fantastically well. I woke up at noon yesterday. And I was going to fall asleep in my chair, catatonic, until I found out I was casting Deck Masters today. And then I got a hype, and now I'm ready to expend what little energy I have left and give my life for esports. Well, uh, give your life for esports. That sounds like a zealot line from StarCraft 3 coming right up. Now, I'm kind of uh, like I'm kind of hyped today because we're going to start the playoffs. And again, this is a culmination of the entire event going to start today. We're going to get, in fact, a semifinals match between uh, some of the top players gonna cast and by the way they're all best of fives in conquest instead of best of three so they will be amazing uh we're gonna get gar versus cypher then we'll have life coach versus kufdon kufdon and a somewhat unknown player you might have seen play in the league so far uh, if he goes up and actually gets a really high score he's gonna have a, a name made out for him at this point then we're gonna have kalento versus whoever wins between gar and cypher and then naria versus uh, life coach or Kufdon, whichever of them wins, to culminate into whoever, you know, for match three and four ends up winning for the first semifinals match. So that should be quite interesting. Yeah, definitely going to be walking out of today with some fantastic information going forward. We're going to know who's going to be in the finals for Friday, which is going to be very, very exciting. I'm pretty sure it's Friday. But yeah. Uh, uh, hopefully I'll it'll be there. I mean, hopefully yeah. it'll be Friday. But yeah, we're going to get information about who's rolling into the finals. I got to say, man. Um, you know, obviously we're going to get to talk about him a little bit more later, but Kufdom was one of those guys that at the beginning of the tournament, I, uh, I mean, I don't want to talk too much about him. So we'll have plenty of, uh, plenty of nice stuff to say while he's handsome on the cam for us. But, uh, uh, he's one of those guys that seemed to struggle a little bit early on. I'm, I'm glad to see him here uh, as obvious, uh, obviously my, uh, my tenure casting was way back in the group stages and, uh, you gotta, you gotta root for the, the plucky underdogs to roll through things like this. Uh, he's going to be taking on life coach later on today. And uh, I mean, uh, a heavy one there, if ever you're going to run into anybody. Yeah. But, and uh, interestingly enough, he, he did very well last time he played. Like, I mean, he, he teched against bunny muffins. I don't know if you watched those games, but Kuf Don was, uh, was expecting to be playing bunny muffins and he did. And he played, you know, Bunny Muffins was known for his aggro style, playing Hunter and, you know, aggro pally in this yep. tournament so far. And Kuvdon, knowing that, went in with a, with a druid, like double heal bot, double ooze, Harrison Jones, Senjins, Belge, like every possible taunt. And then he went for the most defensive follow up deck. So everything he did uh, was targeting the entire lineup from Bunny Muffin. So if he does the same to Life Coach, it's a bit tougher, I think, because Life Coach typically plays, you know, Warrior, Druid, Handlock. Uh, those are kind of the classes you have to pin him on. It's a bit harder to read into it and really tech hard. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, obviously, that one's going to be a little bit later today, and I I'm excited to see it. I love the big German. I'm happy he's in here, and, I and you know, kudos to Life Coach for rolling into something. He wasn't. I mean, he ended up replacing Tides. I mean, that was weeks and weeks ago, but ended up replacing Tides of Time, uh, who just wasn't able to to roll in this tournament. And Life Coach making good on an opportunity come a knocking, even though he had a little bit of a, a shaky start there early on. Either way. I'm going to be starting it off with Gara versus Cypher. Excited to see us move to the best of five set. I know that in the earlier stages, we were sitting on a best of three. Uh, so it's nice to be moving into that much more familiar, more comfortable format. We're really going to get to see these guys stretch their legs. Could separate the men from the boys a little bit uh, as well. You know, a lot of people feel like the best of three doesn't give you a lot of room to run. I felt like it was really, it made for some great games uh, through those yeah. group stages. And uh, uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. But we're going to see Gara take on Cypher here to start the day off. Yeah, the, the thing about best of three, again, is, uh, it, it, you know, for, for card games especially, the variance is already very high by, you know, just because of the nature of the type of game we're talking about. Um, chess, obviously, there's no variance, or at least it, yep. it might have to do with your amount of sleep on the previous night. In Hearthstone, yeah, yeah. not only is there that, but there's also the fact that cards are random. So the, the bigger the amount of game, uh, the number of games that is, the more likely you are to really get a good picture of how skilled the players are. So best of three has been 
was shunned, uh, shunned by a lot of the community. The ban as well, a lot of people complained about that. Uh, the only thing that was interesting there is that it became a game of teching, because since you can ban a class, the best of three format allows you to pick up two decks that you know are going to be good against whatever you didn't ban. So it became a mind games thing for, uh, for many people in the tournament. Yeah, and certainly led to some entertaining play, uh, mm -hmm. one way or another. And honestly, I mean, at the end of the day, that's that's the thing to take away. You do want to you do want to try to strike that balance with fairness. And obviously, we're going to have that rolling into uh, rolling out of the group rounds and into this late stage play. Uh, and and we're going to see. I mean, honestly, a, a big a uh, big lineup of names and a couple of surprises in there, which is always exactly what you like to see rolling in there because you got that opportunity for some real surprise play. Um, you know, could see Cypher come in and play and make some big plays. Kufdan, uh, you know, they're going to run into Kalinto. Whoever wins this is going to run into Kalinto, and that's going to be a daunting task, really, uh, you know, no matter what. Kalinto been playing great lately uh, yeah. pretty much everywhere he goes. Yeah, the only he had a little bit of a bad run in the first week of the Archon team league. He went 0-4, losing four oh, games. Oh, yeah, I uh, saw that. Oh, team. I that was, about that. Yeah, that was a really was crazy rough, thing. Yeah. But, he, I mean, I think he'll be doing just, you know, much better afterwards. Uh, he's not a player. Who's really going to get let himself, you know, get bummed out by those losses yep. again? It happened to him early in 2015. He had a few really, really bad matches where he basically lost like every game for the first few months of 2015. People were like, "Hey, did Kalento lose it? You know, they lose the touch, the magic Kalento touch." But no, he really didn't. I mean, he's still as skilled as he ever was. He makes the right plays, but you know, variance will hit in a game like this one. So there's no surprise there. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we saw it, we saw it hit Kibler early on in the tournament. I mean, you, you're gonna have not only just a bad game because that was just a bad game for Kibler, but you're gonna have bad runs like that. Uh, it's the nature. It's the nature of card games. I know there have been times I've gone just sat down at a ring game in a casino playing poker, and you just get blinded to death all night. You don't ever. You get maybe <laughs> two pairs of cards. Yeah. You don't hit your flop on the cards, and you're just like, okay, forget it. I'm down like sixty bucks. I'm just yeah. from nothing. I'm down sixty bucks from sitting at the table. So I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go. Yeah, somewhere else. that's kind of somewhere. what you have to expect, though. Like it, it's variance yeah. game, so uh, things like these will happen. But he's still very consistent, Colento. That is. Um, now I really want to know whether or not uh, we're gonna see Cipher maybe win against Gara because Cipher is a part of a newly formed team. You know, Fate to Karma, uh, a new team made by. Uh, I mean, I think there's Thoida on there with Delathor and Deathalor. That is. Um, alongside Cypher. So those players who've been kind of floating around the, the scene, never really coalescing into one big name, really did so with Fate to Karma. And they've been appearing in many more tournaments recently, so it's nice to see that they can do very well. Again, we saw a pretty, uh, pretty bad run from uh, Hawkeye, unfortunately, on the same team. So hopefully Cypher can pick it up and uh, move on. Yeah, and if you're Cypher, I mean, what a great uh, sort of testing ground, as it were, to get yourself, I mean, a great, uh, really undervaluing Gara to say it out loud, but what a great warm-up match that would be to roll into Kalinto is uh, take on Gara, extremely consistent player. I mean, that's it's it's going to put Cypher to the test and hopefully get him into the right mindset if he can if he can run away with the game. He ended up third in his group overall. He was in uh, Group B. Uh, Gara ending up number two in Group A. So Gara coming into it obviously uh, with the slightly higher seeding in in whatever way that sort of matters. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a very very interesting first match. Like I said, uh, excited to see it. Uh, get started, and uh, what do we got? Let's uh, run through some stuff uh, as we uh, take a little look here. Uh, Gara, I'm going to flip over to my stats. Gara uh, lost to Trump and then uh, beat Orange Harudra and Hawkeye, so he really came back in a good way. Yeah. Uh, you know, Trump won that. You're not going to be too, you know, that's understandable, right? Uh, Cypher coming into it, he's lost to Surrender and Life Coach. Uh, nothing, nothing to be upset about there. And took out Show and Ivan to earn his way into here as we get into this game number one. All right, so it turns out Gar is going to be starting with his warrior. He's got Mage Warrior Hunter versus Cypher's Hunter Warlock Mage. So it seems like um, the Hunter is not going anywhere. And Cypher with the Mage we know is, a, well, we assume is a Freeze Mage. Um, again, Cypher's been doing a lot of Freeze Maging so far in the Vulcan. And we got, uh, I think we got Spec Bug. Yeah, of course, it's our ever-present friend these days. Yeah, Any day it's now, for every tournament. Any day now, they're going to fix it. I believe No Mission Adventure going to be the grab for Gara. And uh, Oh my oh, god, look. It's an $8.99 JPEG. 
<laughs> I mean, no, it's actually, it's like a GIF, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like no, it's got better. It doesn't have that that grainy two hundred and fifty six color limit, so it's right. it's a nice, it's an upgraded one. It's a it's a PowerPoint slideshow kind of thing. A little, a little too smooth for that. So actually. Cipher playing Warlock. I have to assume is going to be something of a mid range Warlock. That seems like the style of uh, the Cipher might play a little bit more. Uh, either it's a slow Zeus star or it is a mid range Warlock. We'll have to see. But gonna drop the armor the smith is really good. And there goes the armor smith. Yeah, and I mean, not a ton of information on that first drop from Cypher, and obviously we haven't been able to flip over and take a look at his, uh, his juicy little cards there, but we're going to take a look at him here. And I mean, and obviously he may just give us some information here on the second drop as he hovers it over. Yeah, okay, it egg. seems to be a zoo deck. Uh, then again, we don't know whether or not it's going to be more of a demon type of zoo or a very standard one. With a slow start that he had, it might um, indicate a slower version, a.k.a. a demon zoo, but we'll have to, to see as uh, the board develops a bit more. It's a really good hand, though, for Gara. Yeah, Gara going to get his patron here early on. Got his acolyte of pain out. So he's got some good answers to cipher here early on. Yeah, it's a little bit of good. armor. He's got to pick up a uh, some kind of inner rage, though, to enable the patron as fast as he's way to do it. Um, because waiting for turn 8 to play Warzone Commander is not very realistic against a zoo player. So at least he's going to get good card draw out of the acolyte. Yeah, uh, got the direwolf alpha out there, so it's gonna be time for Gar to get moving. He had a nice little, nice little early answers going on. Obviously, with that void walker dropping, uh, he's gonna want to get to work fairly quickly before Cipher's board starts to stack up. He's gonna oh, pull man. fire and more axe. That's a crazy draw. That allows him to actually draw even more cards off of. Uh, like his battle rage is gonna be good if he wants to play it here, which I, I would assume is a great play. I mean, you're gonna draw at least two cards, one from the acolyte and then two from battle rage. So that's like. Hmm. The two Battle Rage draws, I think, is just amazing to play. Yeah, trying to figure out if he wants to. Yeah, he's going to get that down and go straight on over. Pop that taunt, and then he can basically play around with whatever he needs to there. He's got his Acolyte that he can send over now that the taunt's out of the way and get some work done. So we'll see where he ends up with it. Got Execute sitting in the hand, but yeah. Yeah, you have to assume like he's going to attack the 1-1 one, one there on the right. Um, there's really no yeah. reason to do anything else. Yeah, Unless you attack the Dire Wolf and execute it. You could yeah. attack it and execute it, I guess. But Yeah, and leave the Battle Rage for later. Mm -hmm. But you're still only going to get two minions out of this, so you might as well just kill the 1-1 right now. And there's a Malganus and a Void Caller in Cypher's hand. For next turn, <laughs> on curve with the Malganus. That is what we call a hand. Yeah, Thorsen grab right there for Gara. Oh! He's up with Inner Rage and Battle Rage as well. Yeah, Grim Patron Inner Rage. Sounds good to me. Not bad. Depending on what Cypher plays, of course, but then again, it's a bit risky if you play that right away because there's a chance that he just kills the two patrons and you get little value, whereas if you play Emperor before you do that, you can maybe get a bit more value. Oh yeah, I think this Whirlwind is going to change his not mind too shabby up. There. And going to change the game a little bit. It's going to give Cypher uh -oh. some more time as well, and this is another Inner Rage. So. You know, that might be... Ah, oh, you still don't do it though, because... Your three patrons could still die to the board, right? That's so true. I think, I think you've got to wait for the whirlwind next turn where you just play Gnomish here and then you turn six Maybe. patron world, like inner rage, inner rage whirlwind, and then you just wreck the universe. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it ends up how worried are you about him? You know, like, are you worried about him developing the board on you? Do you want to get out ahead of that? Or are you thinking, I've got a turn? maybe a couple turns before I'm really uh, in a spot where I need to start popping this stuff quick, fast, and obviously at that point I'll have the mana to do it. Uh, obviously we'll see what, uh, what Gara decides to go with here. Yeah, he's I think go the Gnomish is uh, the most logical play. And uh, now the question becomes, do you kill the Direwolf now? And he does, all right. Yeah. All right, the, it's kind of a... Uh, little bit of breathing room there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Doom Guard pull for Cypher. Not a bad one. Whichever demon comes out of this Void Caller when it dies is going to be good news. Yeah. Because he's got a he's got a charging friend right behind him, uh, ready to go hug city. Oh, feels good oh, to have man. friends. This is a bit dangerous, though. If you look at it, uh, there's the defend of Argus and the power of Whelming. Um, if you defend of Argus, like you can't, you do, you don't want to use your power of Whelming to kill the two four, but at the same time, you kind of have to. Just to, you need to pop the egg as soon as possible. Yeah, and defender of Argus is going to go down. Uh, it's going to put Gara in, uh, I mean, a, a spot where he's going to have plenty of stuff to work through here. Going to pop the egg, get his 4-4 out. I mean, that's a scary-looking board now for Cypher, so nice plays here. 
uh, through the fifth turn for him. Yeah, and actually, is there a chance of lethal? We're looking at what? We're looking at a total of 12 yeah. damage plus Doomguard. That's not plus quite Doomguard. lethal, um, but... Might be able to tap into if, something. If the <sighs> Voidcaller dies and it summons yeah. Malaganus. Yeah, that's obviously... Yeah, that's actually really a tricky. Great situation. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's one of those things where he's either looking at a turn from now, obviously, unless he can uh, he can really... The, the Grim Patients are going to have to be answered, so he doesn't really have a whole lot of time to deal with that. Uh, and in this case, Gara, uh, I mean, not going to have the 100% ideal uh, patron set up there, as he's going to have to sit around for a bit, but he does have a nice board. That's game right out. there. The, the extra two damage he needed. That, that's exactly what he wanted to pick up, an extra bit of damage. And that's going to put him in exact lethal with a 19 damage from hand. And again, those patrons coming out a bit too late, despite the great start uh, from the warrior that wasn't enough to stop the zoo aggression. Again, that's a pretty tough matchup, so yeah, no real I mean, surprises. I yeah, I mean, he, he played into the curve pretty nicely early game there, Gara did. Uh, Cypher just, I mean, honestly drew out of what could have started to be a very, very uh, delicate situation for him there. Obviously, he still had uh, some nice stuff sitting in the hand there, but, uh, you know, drew in perfectly. You end up with that abusive sergeant, and it just gave him that little, ooh, that little nudge. And a quick game there for Gara. He's going to be down a game to Cypher. Best of five, though, so he's got plenty of time to come back. Uh, obviously, uh, Warlock going to be out. Uh, yeah. After that one for Cypher, he brought uh, a hunter and a mage to go along with him. Uh, Gara running mage warrior hunter, and he still got all of his play. Yeah, I think uh, freeze mage is an okay pickup here. I mean, it really depends um, on what he thinks. Like, if he thinks Gara is going to stick with Patron, I mean, he, it doesn't really matter because he has to beat it eventually. Freeze mage against Patron is pretty horrendous. Like, you don't want to be the freeze mage in that position because the warrior can play it somewhat slowly and just armor up until you run out of resources. And uh, it's just a matter of time before you exhaust your own. Unless you yeah, really you're get a great clock. Archmage. That's like the yeah. one time. Yeah. <laughs> so. Gara gonna stick with his unstable goals. Oh, that was already after, I guess. Uh, mirror Entity over to Cypher's side as he is gonna roll the Mage in. It is not the... I was expecting from Cypher. He's been playing a lot of it. So that's apparently more of a Tempo Mage. Or he's playing some kind of grinder mage list akin to that of Strife Crows. Again, not something that's unheard of, but not the most popular one. But that's a great start. Getting that mirror image out is going to stop the warrior. Yeah, and aggravating a, a, actually. A three-two. That's going to yeah. It's going to really put a put a, a hamper on that hero power. It's going to make him have to wait a little bit. Obviously, going to be able to take care of it there. But he's going to have to spend a card. He may have rather waited on. Until a little bit later, and obviously Cypher going to have plenty of time to just sit behind uh, the mirror. Yeah. But Gar's hand is uh, yeah. pretty godlike. Like he's not curving out perfectly, where he's not playing a three drop next turn. But he's got basically like a coin play that's playable whenever he wants it to. Um, the double armor smith is again pretty good against this type of mage because they might play stuff like uh, Flame Waker. I'm surprised that to see Cypher bring this deck. It's not a deck that I expected very much of. And now the double ghoul is not at all <laughs> what Cypher wanted to, to find off that mirror entity. Because those oh. zero twos are gone, basically. Yeah. And it gets another mirror image to throw down on the other side of it. I mean, Cypher's going to be able to be very, very annoying here. Uh, it's going to buy him a little bit of time uh, to get into shape. He's going to get Frostbolt and Dr. Boom, obviously a ways off from that Dr. Boom. And Gara still sitting on a very, very nice hand. But uh, Yeah, I don't know how long you really want to wait. Ghoul. I really don't know how long you want to wait here. Um to do anything. I mean, it, it feels like crap to play the patron now. Yeah. Um, I think maybe the Fire War Axe plus a your own Unstable Ghoul, or maybe Armor Smith Unstable Ghoul. That way, yeah. when you play the patron next turn, there's a chance of like triple Ghoul Pop, and then good luck Cypher. You know, it's one of those <laughs> things where if you just manage to, to get the patron to trigger, that might just be the game, and you don't even have to wait for your frothings, you don't have to wait for your you know patrons um, working with the Warsunk out on the board. Maybe yeah, I like the armor smith play. Uh, we'll see. Obviously, what Gara ends up uh, he ends up rolling out. He's thinking it. He's uh, well. We can't see whether he's thinking about it. Cipher's thinking about it for him. He's thinking about it hard enough for the boat. Gonna be armor smith and to join double armor smith. Okay, so that's gonna be a lot of armor generation. Yes, sir. He's putting his opponent's mirror image in the zero one. So 
So we have to assume this is tempo mate, right? Just kind of whiffing on the draws, though. But yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. The sorcerer's apprentice in there. You'd wanna, you'd wanna be able to hold him off. You know, sorcerer's apprentice gonna let you get out some uh, some spells a little bit early on if you get behind. But yeah, he's just not ending up uh, in the spots he needs to be ending up here. And Cipher's having to sit and look. By and large, he's got his other mirror image in there. Obviously, you don't want to touch that uh, for a while. Was going to buy yeah. him some time. But well, now, this is, Gar is, this is in hell. a great spot with those armor smiths. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not only is he not getting the draws, he's in a situation that's uh, it's it's really hard to argue. I mean, look at that armor up. That's yeah, just it's, it's ridiculous. It yeah. is absolutely ridiculous here. <laughs> Forget like, it. Yeah, 42 health for a Temple Mage to go through with two armor smiths to handle, that is like that is not realistic. At this point, Cypher is probably thinking, let's go through the motion, let's do it because we can. But I don't have high hope that this is going to go anywhere. And you know what, I don't even blame him if that's what he's thinking. Yeah, Gar going to cap off at 44 here. Obviously, if you're Cypher, you want to put Gar through this. You want to make him play it and, you know, <laughs> fatigue him as best as you can uh, mentally. Just try to get him, just be like, you're going to have to think about it. I'm going to make this really super annoying. You know, and maybe he's hoping I'm, I'm going to get to Dr. Boone. I'm, boom, I'm going to go straight eight to face uh, with a little bit of luck there. But obviously still a great hand uh, sitting in Gar's deck, which Cypher isn't going to know at the moment. Um, yeah, Fiery War Axe just free all day there. I'm pretty happy to see the ghoul is actually picked up as a standard now. Like for a little while, people started saying, "Hey, the ghoul is not worth playing. We shouldn't bother with it." Um, but it's been MVP in so many matchups. Yeah. You know, and uh, like this isn't a use that I really much is even against tempo mage. It's actually better to throw down than some of the other options you might have when you're playing that deck against. Uh, yeah, I mean, and certainly if you wanted to make an, an argument against it here, it's, I mean, it's played really, really nicely there. I mean, what a great way uh, for the mirror entity to end up getting spent. He just had to throw yep. a Frostbolt to face, so obviously going to stop the uh, Fiery War Axe from doing anything. But now double patron in hand for Gara, shield block out. He's up to 46 <laughs> health, oh, armor man. up, make it 48 and send it back across. Yeah, and the Battle Rage here is never going to give him any health off of... Uh, his own hero being damaged pretty much ever. And I think Gar is really looking to find a Warsong Commander as soon as possible here. Those double boom bots are really compelling. Um, but he does find an execute at least. Yeah, I, I mean, and honestly, if you're Gar, you, I, that just ended up great for him because now he's got a little bit more breathing room if he does end up with eight damage to face. He's got, you know, he's not quite, it's not going to start chipping into his health. <laughs> Obviously, he hasn't been able to get any work done on Cypher. He's going to get rid of that apprentice. Armor uh, up I again. Think, uh, I think I know the reasoning that if there's an Archimage Antonidas that gets played with a you know one a two cost spell that goes down to one, say an uncivil portal, then he's gonna be able to get himself some fireballs, and that's where things get wrong. And Alakir gets picked nice. up. Oh, that might be the game winning card here for Cypher. That is straight a up. How does Gaur handle draw. this? Yeah, I mean he like again slow playing it because he was so far ahead on health. That unstable portal, the RNG gods were not with him, and now he's got a very serious problem to solve. Yeah, to say the least. I mean, he, he hasn't played a whirlwind yet, so he's still not out of it, but this is two minions he's got to execute. He's only got the one, no way to enable the patrons yet, and with that taunt in the way, how the hell do you deal with this? No mission venter. I mean, Death's Bite gonna just have to waste that fiery war axe and... Wait, is he dead? That's 6, 13, 14, 15, no, 21 damage only, well, only, from Cypher, but it's yep. getting awfully close. And a mirror entity draw for Cypher as well, I mean, could be uh, a very big play. Obviously, he's going to have a huge turn this time around. He's going to clear the board away. Yeah, uh -huh. I like this play. I think it's good. You you make sure that there's no way he has to, he's going to be able to use this minion to trigger execute. Ooh, nice wow. bomb as well. Oh, man, so close. It's actually better than, ha than having attacked with the, to and the with face. with mirror there. entity, I mean, is there a way around this for Gara? Honestly, this is looking nearly hopeless. But there's when when there's an execute in your hand, and you could pick up a second one, and you've got a patron, there's always a chance that you there's pick up exactly life, uh, what you need. Right? Away. Away. That's what you do. I mean, he needs to armor up no matter what. Otherwise, he's going to just die, yeah. I think. Yeah, now, I mean, Cypher here hesitating on the Mad Scientist because patrons. Yeah, but do you want to... I mean, you got to be looking at that armor up. Obviously, 
Um, it's it's something to think about. He's going to spin the fireball. Oh man, that, ooh, that's going to put him all but it's I mean it's it's all over but the crying for the moment. Yeah, he's Gara got to go first. for the patron armor up, attack into Alakir, but then that's going to spawn patrons for his opponent. Patron on, yeah. Because it. Hello. <laughs> yeah, there you oh, go. Oh man, that unstable portal just oh. confirming Raynad's thoughts about it. it. He. Wow, I don't even know what to say. A, a game ruiner for, <laughs> for Gar right there. As uh, wait, I don't think that scoreboard's right. I don't think it's one one. Is it? it's two zero to Cipher? Is my uh, I, no? Yeah, I think it's two zero for Cipher. I think it's Gar. Two to Cipher. There we go. Keggers yeah. is on it. He's, he doesn't let us down. He's a champ. Um, but yeah, I mean, Cypher, <laughs> the RNG loves him today. And I got to say, that's the sort of thing you crack open an unstable portal, and that's what you want to see come out of it. You yeah. want to see Alec here, something ridiculous, you know, something you can throw down and be like, even if it's not going to win you the game, at least you get to go, hey, we had some fun, right? Yeah, I, th I think, though, that like for. This game was all but one for Gara. Like, he was yeah. basically autopiloting to the moment where he could actually just take the game. But getting a, a double, you know, Wind Fury Charger that also taunts up so you can't attack into your Doctor Boom at all. Um, and that was that dealt, I think, a total of 12 damage from an unstable portal. So that sounds a bit ridiculous to me, but. Yeah. It's, but it's, it's I mean, that's the, yeah, sometimes, sometimes you pull absolute junk and. Uh, I mean, it's hard to say Unstable Portal should not be in every mage deck. Every mage should find a way. Just in case. I mean, <laughs> just in case. Yeah. Ridiculous and broken card in uh, the entire set out of which it came out. And the reason was, you know, most of the time it won't do much. But the times where it does something, it's going to be so broken that you just don't want to think about it. Yeah. And he's got almost a point because it barely like ever turns a game around like this. And this was just a perfect example of uh, the potential brokenness of the card. It is. I mean, it, again, it can burn you, and it will very, very often. But uh, mm -hmm. there's a couple times that that you land the card. It's it's one of the funnest things about Hearthstone for me. Is uh, you know you crack open any RNG card, web <laughs> or anything like that, yeah. and you just go, oh, this is why this is why I open the game every day, <laughs> so that I can every now and again pull something super dumb out. Um, and, and just have a good time. Yeah. Kill Command, uh, the latest draw for Cypher. He's going to Eagle Horn Bow from the looks of it. Mad Scientist afoot, and Gara played his Snake Trap, I believe it so, was. What, what trap does he play around Snake? He actually does play around Snake instinctively. He's I don't know how he made it's that. Cypher, he's on it today, man. I mean that that was a great that was a great play. Just playing around it. I guess there's no upside to not doing so. So you're just making sure that you don't get punished for it. And let's put it in perspective. Gara's playing for his life right now. Best yeah. of five. Cypher's up two games. This is not where Gara wanted to start the day. Uh, and now you know he's sitting there and he's gonna have to find a way through it. And uh, I mean a hunter mirror matchup is that is that what you would want if you were sitting down two zero. I mean, it's not looking like a bad play here for Gar. I think Gar can definitely take this. Um, because if you look at the board state, Cypher can't really push for damage or removal without giving Gar more damage. I think Cypher is really just waiting for a moment where if Snakes get spawned, he can get a better Unleash the Hound than he's got right now, which is not going to be solely focused around removal. So, Gar, just going to go to face with that. Thinking real hard about that freezing trap and then deciding he didn't want to end up uh, using that prematurely. Juggler going to hit the mad scientist on the other side. And Haunted. this is how an amazing snake trap is born. That's how you try to set it up. Um, obviously, there's a chance that Cypher just attacks into the, uh, the face with the mad scientist, triggering a potential freezing, if it is, or explosive. Then attacking the juggler with his face and playing Unleash on the snakes. Mm. It's th there's a few plays that he could make, but the very few of them are going to be uh, bad here. I think Cypher's got something of an upper hand if it's played properly. Yeah, and Cypher, I mean, 
rightly so. You can see it on the webcam. He knows where he's at. He is not taking it for granted here. He knows this matchup could go it could go wobbly for him real quick, and if that momentum shifts, he could find himself looking at it 2-2. Uh, looks like it's going to be Unleash. All right, he starts with the Unleash to trigger a potential Freezing Trap, but he's just going to run into Snake, and I think that wasn't the best play. Oh, yep, um, face palm there. I, I think he had a really great play going forward. Um, he lost one Hound, but the second one's going to be at least able to take care of that Juggler. Well, it seems like Cypher's Foresight... Didn't quite play out the way he expected. Yeah, to. he was. I thought he was. I thought he had the reads, but you know that's all right. He's going to get not great value for money, but it certainly not, didn't uh, throw it in the trash. Cipher would have liked for that play to uh, end up oh, just a wow. bit better. Oh <laughs> wow! And the counter play. Yeah, I was going to say this is a counter trap. And the good thing <laughs> is, Cipher has actually got a bow equipped, so he will get the damage, which in a matchup like this one is very important because typically Face Hunter that Gar was playing is favored in the matchup, but. When you can get three charges off a bow, you're guaranteeing that there's potential for you to race your opponent. Um, but again, if Gar forces the answers, then Cypher's going to have to respond. And it takes a long time to respond to a board like this, because you're going to be on the back foot being the guy who's actually replying. It's a bit tough. Iron Beak Al grab there, and uh, Worgen Infiltrator Party. On Gara's side, gets his Leper Gnome out as well. Eagle Horn Bow still fresh and ready to go. Yeah, he's got to kill that Leper Gnome every time. Like, he yeah. can't possibly afford it, giving two more damage. That's a free hero power turn. You really can't afford that. Absolutely. And now, going to look for the possibility to get a little bit back here. He's just going to go ahead and clear the snakes away and call it a day. Iron Beak Owl number two. See if he holds on to it uh, for something else. That high main getting close to coming out. We'll see if Gara decides that the, uh, the creeper's super scary here at this point in the game. I got to imagine, you know, you don't just. But he doesn't really so, have a lot to, to play around. What if you play. I mean, all, every play that he makes could get punished by something that his opponent has. So I think ultimately at this point, you're in the awful position of having to race for face damage and hope that your top decks carry a bit further. Because there's no guarantee that you'll be able to deal with a high main, even if you pick up a freezing trap. Like, even yeah, if you end up playing yours. Yeah. High main there. And, I mean, that's a rough one. You just spent your owl over. But again, like you said, rock in a hard place kind of a situation. Now your opponent's got a very nice looking board. And the race is uh, is definitely on. Piloted Shredder going to be a nice grab here for Gara. Uh, potentially very helpful on the way forward. Freezing yeah, I think he's going to... He's a damage advantage at this point. And this Freezing Trap is godlike for him at, this, like at the moment. There's really... Nothing better. I, I thought that maybe Cypher would leave a minion alive to trigger a potential trap later, but he really wanted to get removed the minions that were on the board. Can't fault him for that. But that means that his hymen is guaranteed to be returned, and it's going to be a tempo fight from the, from here on out. And he's going to push for damage. Might as well try to even it up a little bit. That's the thought for Cypher right now. Kill command and hero power, and it's 19 to 16. Garo with a three health point lead. Hymen's still on the board, and back into the hand it goes. And Freezing Trap, not really doing Cypher any fun here. He's, he can't really do anything at this point. Animal Companion and Arcane Golem both primed and ready. We'll <laughs> Let's trigger that trap because, you know, Might it's probably well. freezing. Yeah, and then you keep <laughs> the Shredder up and then you can play a Huffer, which is another Arcane Golem without a drawback, right? Yeah. And he gets yeah, it. Yeah, he gets the Huffer too. <laughs> oh, Cypher not happy. Yeah. RNG gods have shunned him as he did not pay proper tribute. He'll get his own animal companion and a very expensive high main sitting in the hand, just looking lazy and not doing its job. He's going to get Huffer. Probably wouldn't have minded Misha on the back of that one, but you know, four well, damage to face. It's all the same, really, if you think about it, because yep. you know he's got an arcane golem up, so if you taunt her up, you're still taking eight damage no matter what. Or, like, the best case scenario is you're high enough on health. That it's not really uh, an issue. Like he's gonna have at more, at most four health, and without any healing, he's dead within two turns. Oh man! So Cipher calls it on that one. Gara gonna pick one up in the mirror match, and it's two one now. Gara, uh, nice little playback there. I mean, honestly, Cipher, that snake trap early on kind of yeah. kind of threw things off. Gara developed a really nice board that Cipher had to spend time dealing with, and that gave Gara the time 
to uh, really get himself situated. Yeah, this tour. is uh, there is a lot of like often is just favored for the face hunter as a result of evolving into a race very quickly. And face hunter, well, I mean, they're pretty good at racing. Yeah, won that one uh, and put Cipher to the wall again. I mean, it's a weird one to go into. You're sitting too well. You end up. Uh, running the mirror match, I'm sure. I mean, Cipher, obviously, uh, out of choices at this point because he's played through uh, the stuff that he's got to play with. He's going to be sitting on his hunter again. It's going to be Warrior for the third time here for Gar. He hasn't had a whole lot of luck with it here, but uh, might be able to find his rhythm against Cipher's hunter deck. Yeah, I mean, it's a mid-range hunter, so obviously one of the top decks at the moment. It's been like this for a long time. It's been around forever. Um, however, Patron Warrior typically has a small edge over it. So it's not impossible at all that Gar can pick up another win with Patron, like a, a second win with his Patron deck. We'll go ahead and get the ghoul out. And we, you mentioned it earlier, but I, I do like the ghouls. It, it felt really good there earlier. Um, in this case, it's, uh, you know, it feels like it's going to be some good value potentially here early on. Uh, obviously, web spinner gonna grab uh, Bloodfin Raptor. Nothing That's too. That's a crazy. pretty good pickup. It allows you to stay on curve. So that you can curve nicely with the three drop and four drop. So again, then again, there is there is a death bite. There is a death bite in the water's hand. So that's going to make whatever you play here a little less impactful, maybe. Rothing um, Berserker gonna come out quick. Oh man, quick that that's a <laughs> sick Houndmaster. There you go, getting a free frothing getting it for dinner. Sir, took care of business right there. I mean, again, Gara could have been getting himself into a position for some scary shenanigans there, but solid taunt up and a uh, nice, quick, easy, clean death spike going to be the play here for Gara. Yeah, as, I wonder uh, if uh, if Gara's playing Brawl or Big Game Hunter because it's, it's a card that's been teched in in a few decks right now in Patron. Uh, cards that didn't see that much play, but you have either of them against. You know, if it's aggro, Brawl is good. If it's controlled, then you're, you're golden with BGH. Having some received trouble there. But that's okay. It all cleared up now. Sneak traps it in the hand for Cypher. I will reorient myself. It's Warsong Commander for Gar. Okay, I'm, th I'm there. I'm, I'm in it. I'm ready. I'm in it to win it. Because I'm Mystic on the board. Gar thinking. And down yeah. 21, uh, 21 health to 30. I mean, a tempo so. Kazan isn't too bad. It's just not going to be as impactful as you'd like it to be. But then again, if you if you look at it, the Gnomish Inventor can trace. His opposing minion will have only two health left. But this is what Cypher wants. He wants to be able to push for phase damage without getting any massive retaliation. Yeah, I mean, it's working out nicely for him here. Is that death by death's bite gets ended, finished off? I got words good, and me talk them very very fine. Misha going to be the pull and uh, four damage here. If he just wants to send it on over with that taunt there, um, you know, might not be the worst idea in the world. He's going to steady shot, and yeah, down to 15. Down to 11. There we go. Uh, Armorsmith is probably the best possible thing. Personal Commander Armorsmith into Inner Rage allows you to trade uh, into the Misha. You're probably surrendering your Armorsmith if you do that, though. Um, so maybe there's an argument to be made for not playing the war song and just going for the fire war axe and the armor smith plus inner rage yeah that's going to clear the board quite nicely and obviously again i mean it was it was worth mentioning when cypher was sitting 2-0 but still sitting 2-1 gara is the guy that's playing from behind here so he has to find that balance between cautious play that's not going to end him up in a bad spot and, and the play that's going to make sure that he's able to stick around going to take the three damage there end up down to nine on the overall and kill command comes out um, wow, Three that's ciphers. pretty much, that's heaven here for Cypher. He's got, if he gets a beast at all, he just gets the free 10 damage to phase. Do you ever just go for Unleash Kill Command, or is that not worth it? I, I guess it's not worth it, because he's yeah. going to get one armor out of it. I, I, mean, I, I mean, you've always got to be concerned uh, with a warrior sitting over there, yeah. that he might find something that's going to oh, really Shield ruin your block. day. Really loving the shield block here from Gara. It's a tech that was added in. I think initially the first player I saw do that was just Saiyan, who by got picked up by Tempo Storm. Um, so Gara now being on the same team with that guy might explain it a little bit of it. But shield block is a really good card to play against mid-range hunter. 
Uh, or I guess any hunter in general. I mean, they're already good matchups in the first place, but adding this in really helped the matchup a lot. I think it's better than playing loot hoarders and whatnot because they actually have a purpose. Yeah. It gives you a little bit more survivability. Yeah, the, the loot hoarders always just felt like, okay, you get a little bit of card draw, that's great, but, uh, you know, how's it? what's it done for me lately? Uh, kind of a thing to uh, quote some really early 90s stuff and show that I'm a super old guy. Um, Gar, I'm going to grab a death spite. I mean, not necessarily uh, exactly what he's looking for when he's sitting on four health, but uh, we'll see how he plays into things here. He's got one left on the fiery war axe and shield block. Got to come out, of course, uh, pretty much requisite at this point. He's going to get a patron, mm. but he's running out of time here. Well, I mean, if he armors up, he's still somewhat okay. It's just a matter of whether or not you want a death spite to push your face. Yeah. Um, to set up a patron next turn, and that's like your best way to win because you're going to be on turn eight, let's say. The board, uh, he's not going to be able to get too much of a board set up here. Uh, so, I mean, Cypher, he's still got some time to play this. Uh, Battle Rage going to give him a War Song Commander. And straight to face for three, down to 27. Unleash the Hounds out now. So he's got two turns in a row, Unleash the Hounds, Kill Command. Uh, and the snakes also that come out, but the oh, snakes the snake are a liability trap, yeah. here. And out now with those hounds up, the Grim Patron is threatening, um, threatening oh, you yeah, a lot. That be, that, that's I mean, with that armor line, smith, it's even worse. Cipher, you want to put this down? So I mean, do you, do you play for it and hope that you're able to finish it off quickly enough? That patron is in hand. Ooh, that's a gambit right there for sure. Yeah, I think Cipher might be considering kill commanding the armor smith because he knows that if he plays this unleashed. Sending is, and it's a play that you have to expect at some point from your opponent. There's a card that's been sitting there forever, and uh, it's dangerous. With the armor smith, it's even more dangerous. Yeah. So uh, unleash. Ooh, is he going? Is has he? Has he's he... got to do it. So how much armor is that? It, you're gonna get a little bit from the armor smith. Actually, is. That actually, he's still gonna do it and win, I think, because that's if there's more patrons, then you get more unleashes, right? Yeah. Oh no! Now that with five minutes, there's gonna be five extra. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But then again, those are countered by the extra unleashes. He's gonna be fine, right? Because every it's, one armor that's gained is gonna be removed from the hounds. Yeah. So oh, and yeah, wow, with the unleash right. and kill yeah. command sitting in there, Cipher, I think, isn't necessarily <laughs> confident that that's gonna be the case because he's sitting here watching like a hawk again. This is a massive moment here for Cypher. He's going to get some patrons. Everybody is going to get in here. And, I mean, like, what a, again, massive gambit for Cypher here. But he's got uh, seven hounds, man. He's going phase for seven. Let's just get, let, let that sink in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three mana, seven damage. Like, that is... Oh, it's a big one. I mean, if you're Cypher, you're just sitting there. You're like, okay, I think, I think that went. I, I think I'm okay now. And there we go. And yeah, I actually man. didn't really like after until he got his second unleash. This looked very difficult. The second unleash really allowed him to capitalize on the patrons getting spawned. So unless there was an OTK, he was going to be fine. And Cypher's going to seal a series three to one over Gar in this best of five, which means he's going to yeah. be able to represent Fate to Karma a little bit longer in the event. Yeah, and good for him right there. I mean, three straight patron warrior losses for Gara. Uh, you know, he was going to have to win with it eventually. He couldn't pick it up. Uh, Cypher with some great answers pretty much every step of the way there. <laughs> One of them very, very heavily uh, RNG. But what a beautiful thing to see Alec here come out out on Stable Portal when you're kind of sitting there going, what am I going to do? Oh, sure. I'm going to pull Alec here. I'm going to pay five mana for him. And uh, I'm going to just hit him. I'm going to hit him in the face. Yeah, because the fun shield is so easy to handle when you're a warrior, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, that's a pretty good series, honestly. I think without that Alakir, though, things would have gone very differently during that game. Um, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Civil Portal carry was pretty crazy there. It's strong. It's too, it's too strong. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Most of the time not. Sometimes absolutely amazing. In that case, it got Cypher out of a pickle uh, and gave him the 3-1 win over Gara to move on to take on Kalinto. We'll see how he does in that uh, a little bit later on. I want to say it's next up we're going to be looking at uh, Life Coach taking on Kufdan. We will be back with that set here very, very shortly so you guys stay tuned. Yeah.